Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod Science Classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 14th April 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see today's quote. So today's quote is again motivational quote given by Abraham Lincoln. So the best way to predict your future is to create it. So the best way to predict your future is to create it. So this is the thing which mainly said by Abraham Lincoln. So now let us try to see first topic. Actually, this topic is related to non-communicable disease. So here we are going to discuss about this diabetes mellitus. So diabetes mellitus commonly you might be knowing about sugar disease, right? So in this diabetes mellitus or sugar, we can see there is elevated or high levels of blood sugar level. In blood, there is higher level of sugar which is present. So why there is higher level? Actually, we will be having pancreas. Okay, in our body we will be having pancreas. So pancreas will be releasing one hormone. That hormone is insulin. So what is the function of this insulin? So this insulin will be converting glucose into glucagon. So what are the glucose that is present in our blood? So that will be converted into glucagon. So what happened in this diabetes mellitus means, so one case will be there will be decreased release of this insulin. So whenever there is insufficient insulin which is released by this pancreas means, so insulin will be present in the less amount so that its function will be also less. So here only little amount of this glucose is converted to glucagon. So because of this in our blood, we can see there is high levels of glucose that is seen. So this is the first case. And if you see the second case, what happened? Yes, pancreas are functioning good. Okay, pancreas are functioning good. But what happened? Whatever the insulin that is secreted, so the many cells are resistant to this insulin. So this condition is called insulin resistance. So this insulin resistance is also one of the important reason for this diabetes mellitus. So whenever there is decreased amount of insulin production, that mainly comes under the type 1 diabetes mellitus and because of this insulin resistance we can see there is a type 2 diabetes mellitus. So in the most of the cases we can diagnose so this diabetes mellitus as type 2 diabetes mellitus. So apart from this type 1 and type 2 we can also see another type of diabetes mellitus that is gestational diabetes mellitus. So gestational diabetes mellitus means normally in pregnancy, normally in pregnancy there will be some uh, disturbances that is seen in metabolism and even pregnant woman she will be consuming lots of amount of food right so because she need to give the food for the baby in the fetus in the womb that is a fetus also. So during this pregnancy also we can see there will be diabetes that can be many of our women that will be facing this diabetes mellitus in this pregnancy time. And sometimes after delivery, so it will be resolved. For some women, it will be not resolved. So this third type of diabetes mellitus is gestational diabetes mellitus. So this article, now we are going to discuss about this gestational diabetes mellitus. So why it is important? So whenever a woman who is uh, suffering from this gestational diabetes mellitus means, so there will be elevated levels of sugar in her blood. So that blood will be transmitted to fetus in the womb. So because of this, what happened, it will be having some metabolic disorders even in the fetus, right? So there is a high chance of transmitting of this diabetes mellitus from mother to the child. So whenever this diabetes mellitus is transferred to the child means what happened? So if at all the, the child is male means, okay, well and good. So that will be present only with him. But if the in womb, the child, the fetus was female means what happened? After giving the birth, that female will be grown up into adult. And after marriage, she will be also entered into pregnancy and this vicious cycle will be going on. So actually, this diabetes mellitus will also lead to other important non-communicable diseases. So how? So if we are talking about this diabetes mellitus, we can see there will be increased sugar concentration, okay, sugar levels in our blood. So that blood will be transported to each and every organ in our body, like per se brain, lungs, and as well as our stomach, etc. So each and every body part, each and every cell which is present in our body, that mainly requires blood because this blood will be carrying oxygen to all the parts of our body. So whenever this blood which is flowing from one organ to another organ, which is carrying the blood, which is carrying the oxygen, Right. So along with this oxygen in this diabetes mellitus people, we can see there is elevated sugar levels. So because of this, that will also leads to organ damage. 
that will leads to other non communicable diseases like heart failure hypertension and even that will leads to kidney failure lungs failure liver failure so these categories which mainly comes to this non communicable disease right so this is about a, some introduction regarding this topic and now let's try to understand what is the thing which mainly said by author in this article so this article is important from your health which mainly comes under gs paper 2 I think if you see this introduction, you might got at least ten percentage of information regarding this diabetes mellitus. Even if you're from non-science background, also I think you have understand this different types of diabetes mellitus. So this different types of diabetes mellitus is important from your prelims point of view. Okay, I gave you some brief introduction regarding the topic. So what happened? Why it is in news? Because till recently till recently we mainly focused on this communicable disease so communicable disease means that disease that can be easily transmitted from one person to another person but in case of non communicable disease it cannot be transmitted from one person to another person if suppose i am suffering from this non communicable disease means means it will be with me only so if i am going for any social gatherings or if any person who is staying with me like my husband my children they are not going to get that whenever i am going for physical contact with them okay so whenever i am kissing my children or whenever i am hugging my children so it is not going to transmit but communicable diseases yes per se we can see covid 19 pandemic so it can be easily transmitted from one person to another person so because of this we mainly came with restriction of movement we mainly came up with uh, maintaining of social distancing why these communicable diseases that can be easily transmitted from one person to another person easily but it is not in the case of non communicable diseases okay so till now we mainly focused on this novel corona virus now it is a time to focus on this non communicable disease so this is a thing which mainly said by author right for example if you are talking about non communicable disease we can talk about hypertension we can talk about diabetes mellitus we can talk about heart disease obesity so these are some important non communicable disease which are mainly sweeping across the world and they are important reasons for the increasing of the death of people across the world so if you are talking about global burden of this non communicable diseases so for example if you are talking about especially this diabetes mellitus okay so there is one more disease that is diabetes insipidus so don't confuse with this diabetes mellitus and diabetes insipidus so in this diabetes mellitus we can see there is a increased level of blood blood sugar level but here diabetes insipidus that will be the disease where uh, people or patients who are suffering with this diabetes insipidus they will be having frequent urination so there will be the problem regarding this urination okay in this diabetes insipidus but in diabetes mellitus it is about our blood sugar levels so this diabetes mellitus is also called as hyperglycemia so hyper means there is increased level of glucose that is seen in the blood so whenever there is increased level of this sugar in the blood means so this blood will be carrying to different important organs okay like lungs like heart eyes kidneys nerves brain etc that will leads to this organ failure okay in year 2021 if you are talking about the prevalence of this diabetes it is mainly estimated that about 537 million people in the world they are mainly facing with this diabetes mellitus okay and next one is If you are talking about the future predictions by twenty forty five, this report which mainly says that about seven hundred and eighty three million people they are going to live with this diabetes mellitus. So, what are the important risk factors? Yes, there will be some risk factors like people who are at the high risk of getting this diabetes mellitus. For example, aging people. So, because of aging of uh, aging, what happens whenever there is increasing of age means the cells which are present in the body will also lose their capacity. So, because of this, that will leads to either insulin resistance or decreasing of uh, insulin production. And next one is because of urbanization. So, because of urbanization, there is changing of lifestyle of the people, and they will start consuming high fat foods. So, it will be also having some negative impact. And next one is genetic predisposition. For if any person who is having this diabetes mellitus means in their progeny, that is, 
and their children and as well as grandchildren so there will be high chance of getting of this diseases and because of nutrition changes and transition in their lifestyle so these are the some important risk factors of this diabetes mellitus and even diabetes which also occurs during the pregnancy as well so if you're talking about pregnancy related diabetes so some people will be having already pre-existing diabetes before conceiving right and some people they will be getting diabetes during their pregnancy right so this type of pregnancy related diabetes is also called as hyperglycemia and pregnancy that is in short hip okay so this is hip so this hip which mainly covers pre existing diabetes and as well as diabetes that happened during this pregnancy so if you are talking about global level or global prevalence global data of uh, this uh, hyperglycemia in this pregnancy it is like 16.7 percentage of all live births so 16.7 percentage of all live births they will be having this hip and if you are talking about in case india so for every four pregnant women one pregnant woman is mainly complicated by this pregnancy okay pregnancy that is uh, hyperglycemia in pregnancy so in 1980s the birth physician and epidemiologist he mainly came up with an hypothesis it mainly uh, titled that uh, fetal origins of adult disease so it is mainly talking about fetal origins of adult disease so in this hypothesis here this professor he mainly said that man susceptibility to many of these adult onset diseases had already been programmed while was still in unborn okay so whenever baby developing in the fetus so in that fetus or fetus only so what are the disease that that so and so fetus after birth after becoming adult so he or she going to face that will be already programmed programmed in the fetus itself right so in the intra uterine that is inside the womb itself the programming will be going to happen so whenever woman that is pregnant woman or mother who is facing with this diabetes means so in her blood we can see there will be elevated or increased sugar levels or seen okay so here what happen whenever this blood which is supplied through placenta to the fetus means what happen the function and the metabolism of that of that fetus will be also altered right so what happen in whenever there is increased blood supply to the fetus means in fetus also the pancreas will be developed so this pancreas will be secreting more amount of insulin even in the womb itself right so what happen if at all after the birth of that fetus of after the child birth so if child will be having some factors like high caloric foods and as well as lesser physical activity and whenever child who is mainly undergoing stress means then what happened that will be that gun loaded inside the womb will be pulled by the environment okay and child will start developing this diabetes mellitus or pre diabetes and because of developing of diabetes here so this child will be prone to other non communicable diseases like hypertension heart disease kidney damage liver damage etc because blood is an important thing which is mainly moving in all the organs of the body so if offspring is a girl okay if offspring is a girl means she is also prone to develop pregnancy related diabetes when she got pregnancy that at that time she will be facing this pregnant uh, related pregnancy related diabetes and additionally what happened so her progeny that is her children her grandchildren they will also get this non communicable disease so this is a vicious cycle so what can be done so before conceiving if at all mother who is having diabetes mellitus means so she need to make her blood sugar levels under control right so the one of the important major strategic point here is we need to check made the diabetes or ncds non communicable diseases at an intra uterine level okay so if it if she is having this pre existing diabetes means so this value should be maintained and it should be near to normal levels prior to conception and that person should maintain a proper healthy weight and if you see in pregnancy we will be having 9 months so 9 months will be divided into 3 months each into 3 trimesters okay so in this 3 trimesters so first trimester of pregnancy it is very very important because all the major organ system they will be begin to form in this first trimester so in this first trimester here women should be at most careful and she should be maintaining her blood sugar levels right so here 
because whenever any woman who is facing this diabetes mellitus during this pregnancy and she should be monitored well okay and whenever she is going for the first visit to maternity clinic at the time only first we have to monitor this blood sugar level and we need to come we need to come across or we need to diagnose this diabetes as early as possible such that we can avoid or we can prevent this vicious circle of which is cycle of this non communicable disease transmission from mother to mother to child that is from mother to fetus right so once this hyperglycemia in pregnancy which is detected means we need to focus on medical nutritional therapy if needed and we can give the insulin therapy that can be done to maintain the proper glucose uh, levels or blood le blood sugar levels in the body so the time around consumption which mainly offers a great window of opportunity to optimize metabolic status in all women in reproductive age group and the health of offspring is also very very important because further generations mainly depends upon the metabolic health of a pregnant woman so pregnant women should take a proper care if they are suffering from this diabetes right so targeting pregnancy related diabetes and breaking the vicious cycle of this transgenerational transmission it is a one of the important task especially to decrease the burden of this non communicable disease in the country so this is about this topic and now let's try to see next topic it is regarding india to grow at 8 percentage world bank so this article which is mainly talking about gdp estimates so this is mainly done by world bank so now let us try to see this topic actually this topic is important from your gs paper 3 under economy so what is this gdp gdp it is nothing but gross domestic product it is nothing but the total value of final goods and services which are produced within a territory within a specific period of time normally it is one year so this mainly comes under this gross domestic product so now let us try to see context if you see context it mainly says that india projected to grow at 8 percentage okay india projected to grow at 8 percentage over the current fiscal year that is from april 1st to march 31st and 7.1 percentage over next year that is 2023 to 2024 fiscal year so this is a thing which mainly said by world bank in its by annual south asia economic focus reshaping norms okay according to by annual south asia economic focus reshaping norms a new way forward which may release and according to that it said that in this current fiscal year the growth will be 8 percentage and the next year it will be like 7.1 percentage now let us try to see some more important details if you see details it mainly says that the country is estimated to have grown at 8.3 percentage in the fiscal year that just passed okay country is estimated to have grown about 8.3 percentage in the fiscal year and we are seeing like a contraction of 6.6 percentage in the previous year due to this covid-19 pandemic and this estimate says that in the south asia region so growth which mainly expected to be slower than compared to that of projected here okay and what is the reason reason here is because of russia ukraine crisis which mainly impacted the region so when it was already experiencing the fragile growth rising of commodity prices and bottlenecks to supply uh supply and as well as a financial sector vulnerability so because of all these reasons there will be like there will be like some fragile growth that mainly expected due to this following reasons so the impact of the war has has seen faster inflation and deteriorating of current account balances and that also led to increasing of physical deficit so what happened because of this russia ukraine crisis that mainly altered global oil supply it mainly altered edible oil supply okay especially sunflower oil and also affected wheat supply okay so because of all these things in major of the countries were mainly dependent on this russia for this oil especially european countries so they are mainly facing energy security right and because of increasing of this global crude oil prices that led to increasing of this transportation cost so because of increasing of transportation cost that led to overall increasing of inflation so in yesterday's lecture we studied about inflation in india right so finally world bank which mainly says that whatever the monetary policies 
and what are the fiscal policies are present in the countries so monetary policies from the central banks of the countries and fiscal policy from this government of so and so country so what are the steps they are taking like monetary policy and fiscal policy they need to counter the external shocks here and they need to protect the vulnerable here and they have to lay the foundation for the green resilient and inclusive growth okay so this is the warning that is mainly given by this world bank so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding amid the war india looks to rev up grain export so this article which is mainly talking about grain export from india the grain export from india so whenever we talked about impact of this russia ukraine crisis in in on india so we said about one point that so ukraine and as well as russia they are largest producer of wheat because they lies in temperate region right so temperate region atmosphere is very much good for growing of wheat so what happened because of this russia ukraine crisis that led to decreasing of this wheat production in russia so countries which are mainly dependent on this wheat exports okay wheat exports of this russia now they are mainly looking for other countries which sub, which mainly export this grains so actually you know that in india especially in the north india we will go for wheat production actually because of winter rainfall that is very much suitable for this rabi crops in india so we are going for this wheat production in the northern india like punjab and as well as haryana regions so what happened now because of this russia ukraine crisis now there is one impact like we are going to increase our grain export so this thing i said i think 2 months ago so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so this will be important from your economy point of view which mainly comes in a gs paper 3 so if you see context it mainly says that the russia ukraine war has created challenges the world over the terms of food grain supplies and the government of india is looking to step with a likely export of 100 lakh tons of grains this year with the first quarter itself resulting in the orders for 35 lakh tons so what happened because of this russia ukraine crisis that led to number of challenges like decreasing of oil supply from russia and we already saw about edible oils and we also having some issues regarding palladium and as well as some important material like neon uh for this automobile industries from russia okay so these are some important drawbacks that are mainly seen or challenges which are mainly due to this russia ukraine crisis so at this time we are mainly focusing to increase our grain export that is like 100 lakh tons of this grains this year and just in the first quarter in the first 3 months itself so there was like 35 lakh tons of orders so if you see the details it mainly says that so commerce minister who is also the minister for the food and public distribution he told that his ministry has put in place an internal committee okay so they mainly came with internal committee and this inter- internal committee which mainly looks into quality to standards of food exports they are not focus they are not only focusing on this food exports but even they are focusing on the grains and even other food items as well they can export to the other 180 countries in the world right so there is nothing wrong with the quality of our grains and other food items but specific countries they have particular quality to norms as uh, and also different requirements of the food items because some countries they will be consuming so and so grains and they will be having some quality requirements and the quality norms so we need to address those quality norms and based on their requirements we need to go for exporting of the food grains from our country so this is the thing which mainly said by the ministry and internal committee is also looking at matching what we have got and putting in place paper work for facilitate exports so what happened here internal committee which is also focusing to improve our food grains export and if you see this image i found this is image is interesting and this image is about bihu dance it is about bihu bihu which is mainly celebrated in state of assam so now let us try to see some facts regarding this bihu so you might get uh, questions regarding this bihu in your prelims so we should not take any chance so let us try to learn about this bihu as well so bihu it is one of the main festival in assam so actually this this festival is mainly celebrated three times a year so wrongly or bohang bihu is observed in month of april okay and next one is kongali or kati bihu is observed in month of october 
okay and next one is mark bihu observed in january so actually this is about wohang bihu which is mainly celebrated in month of april right so if you are talking about this wrongly or bohang bihu it is assam is new year and also spring festival here so if you are talking about this bohang bihu dates on like april 13th to april 21 and actually it is a harvest or sowing festival and it marks the first day of hindu solar calendar okay it is also observed in states like bengal manipur and as well as in nepal also orissa punjab kerala and assam tamil nadu so if you are talking about the festive food like pita pita is nothing but rice cake and laris it is a traditional food made up of rice and coconut they are mainly prepared on this festival and one of the important speciality of this uh, festival here is men and women they are in traditional muga silk that is golden silk uh, attires and they will do some dances to the rhythm of this bihu tunes okay and there will also beatings of bihu dhol that is traditional drum across the state and actually this bihu dance it is one of the folk dance of uh, assam right so now let us try to see next topic it is regarding india's solar power energy targets so this topic it is very important from your environment and ecology already we discussed this topic in our yesterday's lecture so in today's paper also there is one article in text and context which is talking about this india solar power so we are going to discuss that so if you see context it mainly says that a report jointly presented by two energy firms that is jmk research and analytics at institute for energy economics and finance and anal financial analysis so these are the two important research firms they came up with a report they said that india is going to miss its 2022 target so 2022 target it is to install 100 gigawatts okay 100 gigawatts of solar power capacity that is gigawatts or gigawatts you can pronounce any way so your 2022 target here is to establish 100 gigawatts of solar power capacity so we are mainly lagging behind in this rooftop solar capacity so we're talking about further more details which mainly says that since 2011 if you're talking about india solar policy so since 2011 onwards india solar sector has been grown at a compounded annual growth so since 2011 onwards we are seeing there is a growth in this india solar power okay and the rate it is like 59 percentage 59 percentage of growth that is mainly seen so from 2011 to 2021 there was increase from 0.5 gigawatts to 55 gigawatts okay so within this one decade within this 10 years we saw that 0.5 gigawatts to 55 gigawatts of increasing of the solar capacity that is mainly seen in india and we also came up with one scheme that is jawaharlal nehru national solar mission so it is also known with a with uh, in the name called as a national solar mission so actually we came up with this uh, scheme in 2010 that is 2010 which is a marking a first time that government which is mainly focused on promoting and developing of this solar power in india so in 2010 that is in 2010 we came up with this national solar mission so it is a first scheme said uh, saying that yes government which is mainly focused on promoting and as well developing of solar power in india so under this scheme the total installed capacity was set at 20 gigawatts 20 gigawatts should be uh, installed then the cap, uh, target year is 2022 but in 2015 the target is revised to 100 gigawatts okay and in august 2021 we came up with the setting of solar target that is 3 300 gigawatts by 2030 So first, whenever we came up with the scheme, our target is twenty gigawatts by twenty twenty two, and we reached that. And later on, we extended to hundred gigawatts by hundred uh, gigawatts by twenty twenty two. And later on, in recently in August twenty twenty one, we increased our target to install three hundred gigawatts of the solar energy capacity by twenty thirty. So this is the target. So if we are talking about India, India, which is currently ranks fifth after China, US, Japan, and Germany. in terms of installed solar power capacity so this is very important points for prelims and as of december 2021 so we have 55 gigawatts of this installed capacity of this solar power so why what does this report say that means what are the highlights of this report so we are talking about this highlights of this report so as of april only 50 percentage of this 100 gigawatts of target we came with that so if you are talking about 100 gigawatts 60 gigawatts from utility scale and remaining 40 gigawatts from this roof top solar capacity 
so here in 2022 we are expecting to achieve about 19 percentage that is overall 69 percentage we can achieve and remain 27 percentage which is mainly left so this is about this report so if you are if you are talking about what is the loop holes that is mainly seen in this solar power so there is no proper consumer awareness there is inconsistent in the policy frameworks of both central and as well as states and there is problem regarding financing as well so if we are talking about recently however there has been a sharp rise in this rooftop solar installations actually there is decreasing of technology cost that is mainly seen increasing of grid tariffs we can see and rising of consumer awareness so these are the some important steps were mainly taken and that led to increasing of this installation of this solar power capacity so we're talking about what are the factors that led to impeding of our roof top solar installation for example because of this pandemic induced supply chain disruptions and even because of policy uh, restrictions and regulatory roadblocks and also net marketing okay and taxes on imported cells and as well as modules and some power supply agreements and even banking restrictions financial issues so that led to delays in this in rooftop solar installations so this was about this topic and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding human rights not discussed at this 2 plus 2 meet so this article talking about india us 2 plus 2 dialogue so this topic is important from your international relations which mainly comes in the gs paper too so if you see context it mainly says that our excellent affairs minister has said that there was no discussion regarding this human rights in India during this India US 2 plus 2 foreign and defense minister dialogue that is mainly uh, in uh, mainly held in Washington. So, we are talking about details. So, it is a fourth 2 plus 2 dialogue between India and the US. So, it is mainly going on in Washington DC. So, if you are talking about this 2 plus 2 meet that is between external affairs and as well as defense minister of the both the countries. So, what are the outcomes? So, till now we went for 3 uh, 2 plus 2 dialogues and this is the fourth one. So, over the years we are mainly having strengthening of our bilateral relationship and it is also producing a tangible and as well as far reaching results for India. So, we came up with signing of some fundamental pacts between India and US during this 2 plus 2 dialogue. For example, LEMOVA that is Logistic Exchange Memorandum of Agreement and we also came with Comcast and as well as BECA. So, these are some important agreements that we signed between India and US during this summit. So, if you are talking about what is the significance. So, this 2 plus 2 ministerial dialogue which mainly enables the partners for the better understanding and also to appreciate each other strategic concerns and as well as sensitives taking into account. Okay, So, we can improve our strategic relationship and we can also integrate greater strategic relationship in a rapidly changing global environment as well so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic so this topic talking about one important scheme that is gram swaraj scheme so whenever any scheme is in use means you have to know about that scheme that will be important from your prelims so this article is important regarding gs paper 2 under governance so now let us try to see context so cabinet committee on economic affairs ccea on wednesday approved a proposal to continue the rashtriya gram swaraj abhiyan okay so cabinet committee on economic affairs came up with a proposal to continue rashtriya gram swaraj abhiyan so this scheme it is mainly focusing on improving of governance capabilities at panchayat raj institutions so let me know which schedule in our constitution which mainly talks about is panchayat raj institutions and through which constitutional amendment act we came up with this panchayat raj institutions in india so let me know answer for these two questions right so this article says that cabinet committee on economic affairs which mainly approved for extending of this scheme till 2025 to 26 so now it's time to see some facts regarding this scheme so actually this scheme launched in year 2018 so actually it is a central sponsored scheme so if we are talking about schemes we will be having central sponsor and central sector scheme so central sponsored scheme means there is a funding which mainly shared between central and as well as state central sector means 100 percent funding that will comes from this central government central government so what is the aim of this scheme it is only focusing on strengthening of this panchayat raj institutions and they are mainly focusing on achieving of sustainable development goals 
and if you're talking about main thrust they are mainly focusing on convergence with uh, mission on antyodhya and they are mainly focusing on strengthening of panchayat raj institutions in aspirational districts right and this is the one of the effort which is mainly done in achieving sabka saath sabka gaan sabka vikas okay so this is about the scheme and if you see further details so in this scheme the priority will be given to subjects of a national importance who are mainly excluded groups for example because of poverty primary health services uh, nutrition immunization etc and this scheme is mainly extend to all states and union territories of the country and they will also include institutions of rural local government in non part non part nine areas and it will also establish the institutional structure for capacity building right and panchayats will progressively be strengthened through incentivization on the basis of nationally important criteria and they will be also encouraging the courage spirit among them so now let us try to see yesterday's question the first one it is regarding indian philosophies that is sankhya philosophy and nyaya philosophy so first statement is according to sankhya philosophy the pros the presence of divine agency is not essential for the creation of world yes and according to nyaya school of philosophy salvation can be attained through acquisition of knowledge yes so here you have to identify not correct that is incorrect statements that is none of the above and next question is regarding mathura school of art so first one is they were made up of white spotted red stones yes red sandstone next one is curly hair so we can see curly hair in this mathura art and this one is no marks on the forehead yes dress is always tight on the body yes so correct option will be 1 3 and 4 option 1 is correct answer and these are today's questions the first one is regarding harappa civilization second one is regarding ikta system so please try to read the statements and give me the correct option in the comment box so now let us try to see today's hindu newspaper pdf so before seeing that i want to make a small announcement so we came up with this mains answer writing practice program and this is one year program and in this program we are going to give you weekly targets daily one question will be will be given based on that weekly targets and on sunday there will be essay or case study practice so there will be evaluation of your answer and we provide you model answer also and we also provide you one to one mentorship and this course is absolutely beneficial so if you want to join this course actually the registration will be going uh, will be going to end within 3 to 4 days so within this 3 to 4 days if you want to register so please call us or contact us on this number 8074765513 and this is the whatsapp number also so if you want to message uh, if you want to contact us if you have any queries regarding this course so please ping me on this number So apart from that, we are also ready to launch this pen drive courses for foundation course of twenty twenty three. And students who are beginners or who students who already started with preparation, you can join this course. So this will be absolutely beneficial. So if you have any queries, please contact us on the number. So now let us try to see today's PDF of Hindu. So this is our today's Hindu PDF, and the date is fourteenth April. And this is Delhi edition. So first article I discussed regarding this India to grow eight percentage. I discussed regarding this grain export. And if you move further, please leave this uh, city page and as well as uh, this state page. There is nothing much important. I discussed this image that is regarding Bihu. And if you move forward, you will get into this editorial page. So in this editorial page, I discussed. Uh, this topic regarding this uh, diabetes mellitus and there is one article regarding inflation that you have to know so inflation which is very much high whenever the inflation is high that will also leads to decreasing of consumption and that will also leads to decreasing of growth so here government and as well as rbi they need to take the proper steps to control inflation in the market so if you have gone through your ncrts from 9th to 12th class of uh, economy then you might be knowing about what can be the steps taken by the government and as well as rbi to control inflation that comes under monetary policy and as well as fiscal policy and this article talking about india china relations you can go through that once and if you move forward in this text and context i discussed about this india solar power energy targets so this article talking about uh, decreasing of this nepal's forex reserves so what happened recently one report released in the month of april which mainly says that there is decreasing of this forex reserves of uh, of nepal here so we can also see there is a huge inflation pressure on the nepal economy so that led to decreasing of uh, 
uh, huge uh, inflation because of decreasing of uh, Nepal's economy because of there is decreasing of uh, global uh, tourist flow that is mainly seen and even it is also facing energy crisis uh, because of Russia's invasion of Ukraine okay so this is about this topic and if you move forward in this newspaper you can see uh, Sri Lanka seeks help for more friends so actually we saw that economic crisis which is mainly facing by Sri Lanka and the Sri Lanka which is mainly moving towards this IMF to get some funds so this is which is the thing uh, which is mainly highlighted here and I discussed about this 2 plus 2 dialogue and if you move forward you can see this Gram Swaraj scheme I discussed this topic and here Supreme Court refuses to take a plea for uniform court so here you need to know about what is this uniform civil court which article talking about that whether it will come to the DPSP or not you have to look about that and you have to know some facts regarding what is this UCC and next topic in the world paper it mainly says that Biden accuses Putin of Ukraine genocide so this is the thing which is mainly going on and the next article it is regarding NATO membership so Finland is Finland to decide on NATO okay so it is mainly focusing on whether to join this NATO or not so what is a NATO you know right so you have to revise that facts regarding the NATO and if you see in this business paper you can see many article right so India's quarter one imports lift trade with China to record high so actually this article says that a sharp increase in India's imports of Chinese goods in the first quarter of 2022 which is mainly seen again there is increasing of trade by 15 percentage uh, which is mainly seen okay so this is the thing and next one is exports rose 20 percentage imports 24 percentage in march okay so exports so when whatever the uh, goods which we are sending to other countries that will come under exports that is 20 percentage and we can see import whatever the things that you are getting from other countries is 24 percentage so we can see there is deficit of 4 percentage trade deficit of 4 percentage that is mainly seen and next one is about private investments plan to hit record in financial 2022 so we have to wait and look whether there will be increasing of investments or not and next article it is regarding inflation may exceed seven percentage till september so actually what happened what is the inflation means there is increasing of price of goods and services in the market so this condition is called as inflation so this article says that inflation may exceed seven percentage till september okay as of now in march we are seeing like 6.95 percentage of inflation and because of some issues like increasing of global crude oil prices and transport prices and commodity prices like food prices so we are expecting that there might be increasing of inflation will be like seven percentage till september so this is about this topic so these are the some important articles that appear in this today's hindu newspaper i hope you enjoyed this lecture please subscribe to rathor science academy and don't forget to like, share and comment my videos. Thank you so much.